we've just had a thunderstorm. I was trying to have a nap and couldn't get to sleep because of the thunderstorm. So I um, decided to have a look at this circuit that I ran across earlier on. I was looking for something completely different and came across this oscillator circuit. And uh, it's an LC oscillator, the inductor and the capacitor. And what's unusual about this one um, is that um, you've just got the capacitor and inductor in parallel like that. Usually most of the standard oscillators either have a, a tap in the inductor or two capacitors, that kind of thing. This one emitter coupled um, LC oscillator um, is different. It's, it's a variation on what you'd expect really. Um, positive power there so the, the tune circuit is tied to the positive. Um, this one, effectively the output of this transistor is pumping into there. Uh, the, which is also going to the input of this transistor at the base. But when that one's pulled up, it also pulls up constant current there, also pulls up that value so it'll switch off. So in effect it's a kind of relaxation oscillator but um, I found that in this article that if you take it down below the relaxation levels um, you get it at the at its tune frequency which is useful if you want to um, find out what the inductance of the what the value of the inductance is, for instance, which I quite wanted to do just out of curiosity because I've got this coil wound here, um, then the white tape. Um, so, put together the circuit on a breadboard, which on, on this article, I'll put the link below, um, he's done a lot of analysis and come up with a circuit that um, he reckons is a bit more reliable than the basic setup and with a frequency counter in there so we can get the frequency and hence find what the resonant frequency of the tank piece is. Um, I've done a slight variation on it, simplified it from there but kept the, the transistor at the bottom to give the current uh, and redrawn it slightly. Uh, and you can see, you can kind of see how it's one transistor's feeding back to the other. So you've got the loop going around there, and that's pulled down. If, if that's pulled, if that transistor's on, then that's pulled down, and it'll. Oh, forget it. You get the idea. Um, so anyway, three transistors in the middle here, which it won't focus on, of course. One, two, three. Uh, it looks the right mess, but. It, only that. It took me a few attempts to get it going and the reason that I was having trouble with it was that the scope I was using on it didn't want to behave. It was just giving a flat line no matter what I put into it. I found that, I don't know why, this bit scope here which gives me a display like this. Um, that it was flatlining when I was having a high value DC in it on top of that but if I had capacitively coupled it uh, no problem at all and as you can see it's quite a reasonable sine wave one of the things the guy discusses in that article is that if you vary the, the current at the, bottom, at, the, at the emitter of the transistors um, it can go into a relaxation mode uh, in which the free and the frequency changes, so it is no longer at the resonant frequency of the the um, tuned circuit of the coil and the the inductor and the capacitor. Uh, here you can see it's, it's not far off a sine wave there, and I found that with this little, I think it's about 50 turns of quite thin wire, and um, what capacitor is that? Let's see. 104, um, 10 nanofarad capacitor there. Oh no, sorry, wrong one. Um, that one. 102, um, 
102, uh, one nanofarad capacitor there, uh, the capacitor in parallel with the coil, and it, it works out around 110 kilohertz. And I found that if I vary that, the current going in at the bottom, it varies it a bit with this inductor and capacitor, but only it, it actually drops as I increase the current going to it. And it drops to about just under 100 kilohertz. So um, I've not done the calculation yet, but I should be able to work out the inductance of this coil given that capacitance. And th the resonance is approximately um, 105 kilohertz, call it. Um, the way I discovered that I'd actually got something wrong with the scope and not the circuit on, I think it was my third attempt at putting the circuit together on the breadboard, was by swapping out this coil and using um, a little transformer instead for the coil, um, which I can pop back in circuit now, and a high value capacitor. Um, and there you hear it. Now, that um, quite a high value inductance from the transformer and it's a, and that's a 10 nanofarad capacitor. The frequency there is 260 hertz. But as you can see it's way off, that is relaxing. That's, it's pumping up the capacitor and then shorting it effectively. Um, but if I change the value of that current to the emitters, I'm reducing the current now, pitch goes up and the wave gets smoother and smoother and smoother until, well you can kind of, it's very noisy, but you can kind of imagine that that's sort of at, or you can hear the harmonics disappearing, that that's, despite the noise, is much more closely approximating the sine wave at the resonance. If I keep reducing the current, any second now it will cut out. There, gone. Um, but the problem there with the high value inductance and capacitor, that's going from, that's at 790 hertz, call it, and it goes right up to, right down to rather, um, that's 400, 380. So a hell of a difference with the larger values there. So I don't think it'd be any use for as a measuring tool for the um, for high value inductances. But for the little things like my little coil here, yeah, perhaps it would work. Um, so, yeah, just a bit of fun really. There you go. Hi, goodbye.